can remember that they're changing my voice. This video is about 2 Timothy 3. And in this chapter, the mark of the beast is alluded to. I want you to focus on the part where it says they worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women. And their folly will be clear to everyone. They worm their way, right? The worm is an archaic uh, word for the snake as well. It's not just the worm, but it also can refer to a snake. They worm their way into homes, right? They snake, they cheat, and gain control over gullible women. So when I put a special emphasis on attractive females submitting, why is it? Because the snake is getting them. Okay, I'm someone who hasn't been on a date in like, oh man, like seven, eight years, right? Now think about it. Do I have good intentions? Yes. Does the opposition view? No. I'm the top martial artist ever possible. It shouldn't be hard for me to get a date. They should automatically revere me to the extreme. So you know the logic is sound. Now, it starts off by saying this, but mark this. In verse 1, it's the first three letters of the chapter. Excuse me, first three words of the chapter. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Have nothing to do with have nothing to do with such people again. He's telling them to judge. He said if they're doing these things and they won't stop, have nothing to do with them. So people are saved not only by People are saved by works that prove faith. Okay, faith without works is empty, and work without faith is empty. Basically. Now, we look at this thing, and we see that it says, mark this. Mark this. So people who argue that they don't have to try hard to be sin-free, or they argue that they are trying hard, but they're not, have accepted the mark of the beast. If you're a dumb animal, okay, then you're incapable of stopping yourself from sinning. But if you're really a person of high worth, then you can stop yourself. Now, when you look at yourself and you say to yourself, hey, which one am I? If you come to the conclusion that you're a dumb animal, then you may as well be, and that's the mark of the beast. Beast is beta scrambled because you refuse to man up and be a warrior and do the right thing. Okay, so let's go over this again here. It says, people will be lovers of themselves. Am I a lover of myself? Only God inside of me. Yeah, I love that I'm loyal to God. It's referring to people who don't serve God, who love themselves. Like all these people on TikTok and YouTube and all these people you see everywhere with their fancy clothes and their fancy, you know, videos and their fancy, you know, they're allowed to look good and their fake lips and all kinds of stuff. Okay, and they're spending all kinds of money on themselves while there's homeless people and people starving all over the world. They love themselves. They don't love doing the work of God and that which they did not do for the least of the brethren, they did not do for God or I. For God and I. Excuse me, God and I. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. And in a different one of Paul's letters, he says, if you're going to boast, boast in the Lord. You're supposed to boast in the Lord. And that's part of what my martial art challenge is. I boast in my forefathers' dedication to God, being in God, and producing me the top martial arts ever. So I'm boasting in God, my forefathers who are in the Spirit of God, okay, and me. So they're proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and holy. Attractive females as a group are abusing God and I, in a sense, in a sense God, but certainly me. By neglecting me, by cheating me out of my right to lead. It says in Genesis, it's not good for him to be alone when he made Adam. He said, let me make him a suitable helper. It's not good for a man of God to be alone. If I'm not mistaken, most adult males are in a relationship or are married. Okay? But I'm alone. If, if these people are cheating me out of my right to lead, are not alone, excuse me, are alone, it's not good for them, but good because they're doing the wrong thing. But the concern in Genesis was for a man of God made in God's image before he fell out of grace and he said, it's not good for him to be alone. It's not good for attractive women to shun me and to obey the state instead.
And it's not good for a bunch of Satanists and assorted sickos in the church and elsewhere to argue that they should determine what is attractive and play matchmaker. That is sick. I am the head of all the righteous, not the churches, not the mosques, not the synagogues, not the government, not the rich, not the corporations. If you don't know that and you put on a thong and say, he's wrong, he's wrong. Okay, my goodness, have you failed to be a man? My goodness, if you failed to be a man, how the hell do you think you should be in charge? My goodness, my goodness. Without love, right, which is derived from justice and righteousness, without true love, you know, no one else has love but but God, I, and my parents are blameless. What they have is, is emotion and feeling, but it's not true love. God is love. They don't have the spirit of God, so they don't have true love for their family and true romantic love. Without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, right? They want to date other guys because they don't love God. They're scared to love God because they don't love God enough. So they date other guys and they, they seek erotic desire and all these disgusting sex acts and toys and all this. They want to pleasure themselves and go, oh, oh, be some kind of princess complex monster, abomination, like the prostitute in Revelation. But they don't want to do God's work and submit to, to God's son, me. They are the kind who warm their ways. Okay, so excuse me. Um, have, having a form of godliness but denying his power have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who warm their ways in the homes and gain control over gullible women. Who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Okay, that part's key. Write down two Timothy three six. So you see how there's no viable counterargument. So again, two Timothy three. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women, who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. So if we know these people are out there, and they're being war they're warning you about that in these times, right? Uh, Paul's warning Timothy and he wants him to warn the world with his congregation and so on and so forth, right? Is the right thing to do to carefully analyze people and have a solid formula, okay? Which no one else is doing, mind you. They have all kinds of laughable formulas that are designed to reinforce white supremacy, LGBT movements, token minorities, you name it, okay? So it's saying, judge them. It says, have nothing to do with such people. Judge them. Remove the log from your own eye so you can see clearly to see who these people are. Okay? And with my falcon vision from God, I see clearly. Always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres oppose Moses, so all these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. Just like Janus and Jambres oppose Moses, the churches, the mosques, the synagogues, the American government, the governments of the world, the corporations, the other martial arts, they're opposing me by not obeying God through me and leading others astray by their actions. And they're men of depraved minds, it says. But they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. So they will not get very far in leading people astray who are destined to come to God because their folly will be clear to everyone. Does that, does that mean you shouldn't try with all your heart to get people to obey God? No. God commands that everyone scrambles by their actions first and foremost and by their speech to get people to obey God their me. Anything else is folly, and folly is an unruly woman. She's simple and knows nothing. It multiplies the unfaithful among men, and folly is said to be bound up in the heart of a child. All that's in Proverbs. Final charge to Timothy. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, and suffering. Okay, so what does it say? Sufferings. There's characteristics and principles, right? Purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and the Astra, the persecutions I endured, let the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Every single person. When they're not persecuted for righteousness sake, you know immediately they're following the devil. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it, whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through Christ, through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now keep in mind that we can also sum up the Bible, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you if you were righteous. Okay, so how can we sum up the Bible 
Like it says, it says this sums up the law and prophets, unless you need to focus on the principles and not the stories. 